Hey, my December daily friends, Ashley Anderson here. Today I'm going to walk you through page five and page six in my December daily album. So here I'm doing a little bit of a hybrid approach for both of these pages. I am using Canva to do that. Canva is my go-to design tool for anything digital. I absolutely love it. It's definitely user-friendly, definitely great for beginners. But also if you want to take things up a notch, you definitely can and you don't have to like learn Adobe. <laughs> Adobe, I have tried you guys, I have tried. I've honestly put in effort, I've watched videos and I just can't figure it out. I don't like it, it's too complicated for me. So Canva is my go-to design tool for anything digital. I've used it for years and I absolutely love it. Highly recommend it if you're not using it yet. So. For this, this page here that I'm actually creating this on the screen, this is day six and this is where I'm going to talk about my wrapping paper. Now the circle file that I have right there is an SVG file and the reason why that's wanting to go across the entire page is because there is a design tool for the picture that allows you to drop pictures there. And so that's what it's wanting to do. And to get around this, if I take, a, take the picture of the wrapping paper and I lock it into place. I can put any type of SVG file over that and it won't take over the whole screen. I hope that makes sense. If you use Canva, you probably know what I'm talking about. But really this part right here was me just trying to figure out the design that I wanted to do. It took me a little bit, but I finally got it figured out and we're going to go ahead and skip to that part. All right, so I went ahead and I typed out my journaling that's going to be printed directly onto the photo. Behind the journaling, I'm putting a box. The box is colored black and then I turn the transparency of it down some so you can still see through it a little bit but it gives enough behind that text that you can read the text clearly and the text isn't blending in with the light colors that's on that photo. Here in just a few minutes I do end up deleting the filling inspired file thing that I have on there. That'll go and here I'm finding a, a star that I like and I'm going to use that and I actually ended up putting my journaling onto the star, which I thought turned out really super cute. I did make it a little bit larger than I thought I did. So um, you guys will see that later on. To get the journaling to line up where I wanted it to in the star, I ended up just copying and pasting the text box and deleting um, the parts of it that I'd already put on the star, if that makes sense. That was a little bit easier than trying to get like push enter and trying to push tab and do all that stuff because sometimes Canva gets a little bit wonky with those things. So this was the easiest way to do it is I would just copy and paste what I wanted and then pull the text box to the length I needed it to be so I could get everything lined up on the star so it worked out great. The only thing I wish I would have done differently, you guys will see me play around with the colors here in just a little bit, but I ended up printing this out with a red star. So. Again, the transparency was turned down so you could see the text, but I wish I would have left it black because I ended up putting a black number six on this. You guys will see that a little later as well. And I think the black just would have, it would have all blended a, together, but I feel like the red actually blends a little too much. So the red star kind of goes in with that red wrap. I mean, it matches everything, but it kind of blends in a little too much with the red and white wrapping paper that's in the picture, but that's okay. I, it still turned out really, really cute. I just wish I would have changed the color of it a little bit. Here is where I'm just flipping back and forth between red and a dark green on the star color just to see which one I liked. Like I said, I wish I would have went with black just knowing now that I ended up choosing a black number six to go on there. Um, like I said, the red doesn't look bad, but to print this, whenever I download those from Canva and I open up my print settings, I change the paper type to glossy paper and I do use HP photo paper for this. So I change it to the glossy photo paper because that's what I have and then I'll print from that. And then here is the photo paper that I'm using. This looks really wonky because I accidentally filmed it in time lapse 
and now that I'm trying to speed it up so it looks like it's a normal normal pace or whatever is really really weird so I apologize for that but anyways this is the photo paper that I'm using premium plus photo paper it's by HP and I have both the printer that I use and the photo paper for it linked down below in the description box I have both of the photos printed out, the text on them. This one is actually a lot larger than I anticipated. I didn't even pay attention to the text sizing when I did this, but that's okay. It doesn't look too bad. This one I did size the text down on it, so it'd be in the bottom corner. For this one, I know for sure I'm going to use this little cozy word that I got from Allie Edwards. This isn't a December daily product. It was maybe a day in the life or something. I'm not really sure. I don't really know the material of it, but... We're going to use it. So I thought it would be cute to go over top of this word because that's kind of what I was going for was cozy. Like to, I love sitting on the couch. The Christmas lights are lit up. Watching movies with my husband and my son. Like it's one of my favorite things to do at Christmas time. So I was going to use that one there. And then I was thinking about how I could embellish this one. And then how I'm going to attach these. Like I know I'm going to stick them together. I'll show you that in a second. We're going to put them like this in the album once I cut them down but thinking about how I can uh, make like a tab or something I might punch a hole out maybe adhere some uh, plastic in between there or something that might be really cute first let's cut these down and then I'm gonna look through some of my embellishments and we'll see we'll see what I come up with we can hang out on the beach without freezing yeah isn't that amazing in Christmas times We'll be chilling and having a good, good time Doesn't matter if the snow is falling Or the windows in the rain is pouring It will always be Christmas in my heart But this year I want to hang out with my friends and And then just to show you guys, underneath of my desk, I have a uh, one of those Alex, kind of the wider carts or drawer system, whatever, and it's on wheels. So this just kind of hangs out underneath of here for now, and I'm going to get my punch out, and we'll see where the hole punches are. And then in this drawer here, I have my specialty papers and some stencils. So I was thinking... A piece of, I don't want to use vellum, I think I might use plastic or acetate is what I'm thinking of. So let's grab the acetate out and we'll see, we'll see how this works. Alright, I'm just going to hole punch these and then when I do this, I just kind of eyeball it and I make sure there is the same amount of overhang on both sides of the punch and that tends to work out really well. Quick tip. I ordered this hole punch from Amazon. I'll have it linked down below. But if you get one, I want you to know that the holes in it are adjustable, meaning you can move them closer or further apart inside of the punch. Make sure that if you get one, you adjust it as needed to fit the holes in your album. When I first got it, I tested it out and I was like, what in the world? These are way too close together. Um, like I don't, this isn't going to work. Now what am I going to use? Which by the way, a regular hole punch works out just fine. But just so you know, if you get one, the holes on those do slide back and forth. So just make those adjustments as needed. Here I was kind of going through some embellishments trying to figure out what I wanted to use on the tab portion that I'm going to create with the acetate. Now. 
Here I have a one and a half inch circle punch I'm going to use to create the tab section. The punch said, no ma'am, you will not be cutting through two sheets of photo paper today. But what it did do for me was score both sheets so then I could just line the punch back up and punch each sheet separately. Now even punching them separately was still kind of hard to do. You got to put, you got to put some muscle into it, but I got those punched out. Here I'm just cutting out a square on the acetate sheet, just a little small square from the corner, and I'm going to use it for the tab section. So I took Tombow double-sided adhesive tape, I taped the piece of acetate to the back side, so to the wrapping paper side of the photo, and then, I mean you can see it here, here I'm going around the punch out and then I'm going to put the acetate down and then I put tape on top of the acetate and on the rest of the photo paper to adhere the other photo to it. I got them off just a little bit with alignment once I stuck them together, but I ended up just going in with a pair of scissors, trimmed up the edges, and then after this video, I went back with my hole punch and I punched out the holes. Here I'm taking these little asterisks. These are from Allie Edwards. I believe they are from hmm, a day in the life kit maybe. So I'm going to take these and put some glossy accents on them and stick them to both sides of that acetate. Now. They are hanging over just a little bit from the acetate. And I did that on purpose. I wanted it to kind of overhang so you could get a hold of it and flip that page back and forth like it's just a fun little star, star tag for it. Now it's time to adhere down the cozy word. I'm pretty sure now that I think about it, this is probably acrylic. Not 100% for sure, so I could be totally wrong. But I was going to use glossy accents. Actually, I did use glossy accents. I was just a little nervous at first because this word is a little slick. And so I was like, is this going to work? Is it going to stay? Not really for sure, so I decided just to go for it. It's been, it's only been a few hours since I did it, but I don't, have a, I mean, I feel like it's going to stay. It's not going anywhere. I'm sitting here right now as we speak and I'm trying to move the cozy word and it's not coming off the page. Plus it's photo paper and most adhesives stick so well to photo paper. They just like suction right on there. So I use the glossy accents for that. Now quick tip, glossy accents takes about 25, maybe 30 seconds to dry. So make sure you're holding even pressure over it and then also, be careful because glossy accents will slide a little bit, so you want to hold it still because it does dry with a glossy finish, so you will actually be able to see. It dries clear, but it dries with a glossy finish, so if you don't want to see that on there, just make sure you hold it still um, while, it, while the glue is drying. Here, I'm just picking out which numbers I'm going to use. If you guys have a ton of numbers or know where I can get some numbers at, whether it's different textures, colors, shapes, 
materials, whatever, please drop it below in the comments. I only have a few numbers and I mean it's plenty, it'll definitely get me through, but I want, wanted a few more options for numbers, especially with different colors. Um, so just drop that in the comments section if you guys have any places that you love to get uh, numbers from. For the number five on the front with the word cozy, I, it's just a white little thin chipboard and it already had a sticky backing on it so I just stuck that down. The number six is a black number six. It is a thicker chipboard. It is not um, adhesive on the back so I used the glossy accents to stick it down. And then I found this cute little star embellishment and for that I used a one of those like three dimensional little double sided adhesive squares. Uh, on one side of the star and then the other side I used a little bit of glossy accents because I layered it over that number six. So it's stuck down onto the number six with the glossy accents. The double sided square sticker keeps it level with the number six but also the rest of it is stuck down to the page. I probably made that more complicated than what it needed to be so I hope that that makes sense to you guys. Um, either way I was just trying to keep it level but also make sure that that star doesn't come off of there. So here you can kind of see what I'm talking about with trying to keep the star level with the number six using that puppy sticker. Alright, day five and day six are complete. I love the way these turned out. It's just really simple, but very cute. I've got the, you know, my journaling on the photo, a little bit of embellishments to help add some dimension to it. I love the way that this turned out. I thought that was really cute. And then on the back side on day six, I got to repunch the holes because where I didn't get it fully lined up right, the holes are a little bit off and so it doesn't move well. <laughs> Clearly it doesn't move at all. There we go. <laughs> Okay, so there's day six. I should have cut that foam um, little square kind of in half or something, cut a little bit of it off there so it wasn't as tall. But it, I think it'll stay on just fine. I think it'll turn out, turn out okay. But there we are, my friends, day five and day six. As always, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I will be happy to help, and I will see you in the next video.